Yes. Then where where does where does getting into playing instruments and uh, and singing how where does where does that come from then? Just something I was born with. Um, I used to keep trying to play a guitar, and I couldn't hold my fingers because I, I loved the Beatles when I was okay. a little kid. It was the Beatles first of all, because I like I was like they do such cool songs. So. <laughs> Um, the Beatles and then uh, the Motown uh -huh. artists and then uh, ultimately along, along came Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5 I was like oh they're my age so it was perfect <laughs> but I started picking single notes out and I decided I'd play bass because I could pick out single notes and I couldn't hold chords on a guitar wow. and so it was over after that I just started playing bass and trying to sing in a hairbrush like most kids at least did back then. It, but it, was it not uncommon for women to be on bass? Um, even, I mean, it's, it's very rare now. I think I thought guitar yeah. or piano would be something, you know, not stereotyping, but that seems to have been more, what, what most people would, would, would pick. You're right. It was piano, maybe flute and clarinet. <laughs> okay. Not even drums. guitar? Well, some guitar, some mm -hmm. guitar, yes. No bass, no drums, no. And I played tenor sax and trumpet in the uh, high school band. So mm -hmm. I just picked all the boys' instruments. <laughs> and plus of the military, you know, with the bugle, I, like, yeah. I wanted to learn how to play taps and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, there's not even any, any things that you press on a bugle. You had to change the notes with your embouchure, uh -huh. like the way you held your mouth. So I thought that was cool. So I got a bugle and I just started practicing that too. Wow. At this point, I mean, yeah, being a fan of the Beatles and Motown, was it a lot of it just a pastime or what was the reason for you getting into singing and playing the bass? I, I was just obsessed with the way music made me feel. Mm -hmm. And I noticed I had a knack for instruments. I wanted to sing, but I couldn't really sing. And so I would sing along with records, but I could play the notes and the notes would always be right. Mm -hmm. when I played them. So I focused more on playing. And then I started hanging around with George Clinton at some point. And so then I started like, sort of like rapping like him and mm -hmm. playing bass. Oh, you and I, I know. I just, hey, it's a crazy, crazy story. <laughs> oh, okay. Before you get to George Clinton, what, what, what was your parents' thoughts about you playing an instrument in the bass? Did they... With... My mother was supportive of whatever I wanted to do. My father was like, OK, but could you go to school and learn some skills? So in high school, he begged me to learn how to type. What? What's interesting about that, this was like 1974 or whatever. So I took typing and I learned to type. But who would have thought that that would be a skill I could use 20 years later as we're in the computer age? You know, I can just I don't have to look. I can just type. Because I took that in high school like he asked me to. Oh, okay. So that ended up, I don't have to pick, pick I mean, I can literally type, you know, like a secretary types. Yeah. So that ended up being very, a very good thing for me. Uh, the one thing I did do is I took my college tuition for the first year and I begged him to let me go to a studio and record a record. Because it was really expensive back then. And he was holding his head and having a nervous breakdown. And my mother was like, let her do it. What? Why? Are, well, you, are you the only child or how many do you have siblings? Three, three total. And my parents spaced us to be born four years apart so that they could put us all through college. Oh, wow. I was the first. <laughs> Setting the example. <laughs> Bad example. And so he let me take it and I went. And of course, it was a great experience. Nothing happened. That was like the cost for one day. And I wow. learned a lot, but nothing happened. And I was like, okay, so I missed this semester. I'll try to catch up like, you know, next semester yeah. or whatever. And I ended up only staying like a year and a half um, in school. And then I got sick and then I ended up going for another two years. But I loved school, but I just wanted to play my guitar. I mean, play my bass. And I just wanted to be a musician. Well, I was a musician. Yeah. But I wanted to be, you know, recognized as a professional musician. So I guess around the time when you were coming out, you know, around this time, who were the female singers 
that you could look up to that you could say, well, she's doing it, she's doing it. You know, I can see a lane for me or musicians. It was hard. I couldn't really see Elaine because mm. there was Shaka Khan as a young woman. Okay. There was Aretha Franklin. There yeah. was Patti LaBelle. I could not sing like any of them. Mm. I couldn't do acrobatics vocally. Yeah. I could sing along with Beatles music. I could sing along with the Supremes. I could sing along with the Jackson Five. Okay. You know, and Stevie Wonder. I could sing along with them because they yeah. weren't doing a whole lot of acrobatics. But yeah, I would listen to like I kept trying to get in bands and they were like, well, you could play bass, but I couldn't do those type of powerful acrobatic vocals. So it was hard for me. And I played trumpet in a band, too, but I wasn't I wasn't ever singing. So, I mean, I think when you think about the fact that, you know, being a trailblazer at that point in time, it, it must have been hard to see options. So I'm surprised. I'm sure I can imagine why your parents or especially your dad would be like, you know, there isn't anyone to look out, look to and says, well, she's doing yeah. it so I can, you know, there's no Sheena Easton or Gloria Estefan or there's no yeah. climax. So who, how do, how can they feel safe that sure that if we give our daughter this opportunity, she's really good to, and plus Aretha, so there's a lot of church singers who were dominating the church. So Yes, yes. Yeah, it was crazy. And then I was like, oh, well, maybe I'm not going to be a singer. Maybe I'll just talk. And so I listened to after a while, all of George Clinton stuff. And I was like, well, he can talk, I can talk. So I was technically a, a female MC who played bass. Okay. You know, that was the lane I carved out for myself at the time. How, how did you get, um, how did George Clinton discover you, they sort of find you? Okay. It was impossible for some people not to find me because in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, whenever um, either the Jackson Five or uh, George Clinton in any of his conglomerates would come to town, <laughs> Earth, Wind and Fire, the Ohio Players, and the Solar Galaxy of Stars, I would stand on the loading dock with my bass guitar with no case, no amplifier, and I'd just be... Just playing, just playing, just playing. Because I wanted uh, other musicians to talk to me. You know, and like Larry Graham, Graham Central Station, the Brothers Johnson, because I looked up to Larry Graham and Lewis Johnson, who are both bass players, who were kind enough to invite me in okay. and sit down and play bass with me for a while. Um, and George got to where he just saw me so much. He's like, okay, just always, everybody got to know me. It's like, okay, it's the it's it's the young lady with the bass with no case. <laughs> Let her in. And then eventually, after like two or three years of that, George decided he was going to sign me. Uh, and we did a little work. I I was living in Richmond, Virginia. So I convinced him to come to the studio where I was learning how to record and do some work there. So he, he came to do some work on Bootsy Collins and a group he had called Parlet. And he's like, OK, so this is how professional people record. I was just wonderfully excited for that opportunity to sit with him and learn. And he's like, OK, so we're going to sign you. And in the meantime, he was so busy for like the next year. And I had done a song in Richmond called A Wild and Crazy Song under the name of Fenderella, which is, you know, for my bass was a Fender bass, so a Fenderella like a take on that. And this company in Florida, TK Records, decided we're just going to put this song out. And they did release it for a while. And it charted nationally um, in November of 1980. And it was only on the charts for like five or six weeks. But Frankie Crocker in New York, I at the him. biggest station in New York, went on that record. And so people in New York from back in the day still know that record. But the significance for me is I can't find any solo female rapper who charted on a national chart before I did. And there was Billboard, Cashbox, and Record World. There were three legitimate national charts, at least in the United States. Yeah. And I charted on Cashbox, and the, there, was, there was an archivist who sent me a copy of the chart. Mm. I had one, but he had one. And I asked him, I said, did, did, did another female chart as a solo artist rapping? He's like, I, 
he doesn't know of anyone in history who charted before I did in November of 1980. So I'm like, that could be really, really cool. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But the, um, did they get your permission to release the track? Or was it... Well, see, no, that was the problem. They had to pull the track because I wouldn't sign an inducement letter saying, I don't get anything if this gets big. And it was already moving. And so I didn't. And they ended up pulling the record. But had I signed, I really don't feel like I would have lost anything because the record would have gotten much bigger. And I feel like I would have been off on a whole nother trajectory. Probably never would have sang, but I would have been rapping and playing my bass and still okay. following George around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Halftime Chat. Please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of Halftime Chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks, and um, being able to support the channel. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I never participated in that category. Hey, somewhere in between. Well, even on which I did miss you. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.